Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Hi guys. Today is the basic basket weave, and we're going to show you that, which is the basic basket weave here, okay? This is going to give you the opportunity to learn something in a very easy pattern way to be able to teach you guys some baskets. Okay, so I did not show you how to blow these up because, you know, you guys are balloon twisters. You should already know how to blow up a balloon. But let me undo this a little bit because I kind of got ahead of myself. So what I did is I tied them together and there's six of them. And then I laid them in here and I wrapped them up. All right. So as the title states, this is the basic basket weave. Whenever I teach anyone, and I had the privilege to teach several people at Bling Bling Jam last year. So we're going to instruct you on the basic basket weave. Where you're going to uh, just learn it. When I teach somebody, I do recommend you using different colors for a certain reason. And we'll explain this as I'm doing this. But I did these all in these colors. I've been doing a lot of tutorials and a lot of filming. Not just tutorials, but just a lot of filming and stuff. And these were colors I still had blown up. And I didn't want to waste the balloons sitting in my basket here that I have on the side that holds my balloons. So you have six, six balloons. Now the first thing you're going to do is make the base of the basket, the bottom part of, the te of a basket. What's great about learning to make a basic basket is you're going to be able to make a ton of stuff with this. This weave itself is not just for baskets, but we'll get into that as we progress further in the tutorial uh, program of basket weaving and what you can do with patterns and things like that and the other uses of baskets. So what we're going to have, what we have right now is six lilac the Teletex Lilac Balloons. So we're going to take, depending on how wide of a bottom you want, depends on how big you're going to do this. But we're going to stick with the four fingers. You guys know me, I always go with that traditional four fingers. You're going to make your first bubble. And then you're going to make a pinch twist. Sorry, make a second bubble then a smaller bubble, which is about a finger, finger and a half, two fingers, if you really squeeze it in there, and make it a pinch twist. You're going to repeat this pattern five more times. Make sure that your balloons are soft. When you're working with a weave, you want your balloons to be soft because you're going to be working with them a lot. And as you get faster, And believe me, you can whip these things out really, really quick. Hmm. That. That. <laughs> Four fingers, my gentlemen and ladies. That was a little bit bigger than four fingers. It's very important when you're doing a basket to practice proper sizing or the basket's going to look pretty funky. Now, unless you're making it purposely to look in a funky, um, staggery way, then of course do that. And that's part of the theme, that's part of the thing, like a crooked basket, a crooked vase, and things like that. So as we get to the last one here, again, four fingers, or measure it up, make your pinch twist and now you have them all laid out move that a little bit so it's all laid out like so So here is the bottom of the basket. Now we need to connect it so it becomes more secure. Now, I usually do the bottom of the basket 
when I start doing the walls going across, it's going to be the same width as the bottom part right here. And so we're gonna go four fingers. I'm gonna take the next one in row, and you've got what I call the old balloon, and you have the new balloon right here. We're going to put them together, and I always bring the old balloon down, hold on to the new balloon, bring the old balloon up and around, grab the new balloon, and it becomes the next crossover. You do not want to continue the old balloon going across because it'll become shorter and shorter and these will stay longer. This is also a good reason why when I teach, I want you to have different colored balloons so you know which one's the old and which one's the new. Now, I want you always to remember old, new, because when you start doing solid colors, that old, nude brain thought is what you're going to need. But learning to practice the basket weave with colors, different colors, helps you know where you're at. You know that, oh, this one's blue, this one's green, I gotta flip green over. But try not to think green, try not to think that. Um, this That's just a, uh, kinda like the training wheels of learning. The training wheels of learning how to do the basket weave because when you start the solid colors, the thought in your head needs to be old balloon, new balloon, old balloon, new balloon. So let's move on. that new balloon old old balloon old balloon goes under then you bring it up old balloon and you're on the new balloon same thing old balloon goes under new balloons on top wrap it around grab the old balloon face the new or grab the new balloon face the old balloon down again four fingers go across under new balloon one more time going four fingers old balloon new balloon on top Going around, grab, switch hands, four fingers, and now you're at the last, which doesn't have anything, because that's where you started, and it becomes there. I keep it upside down whenever I do a basket weave. Eventually the basket's going to go up against my belly like this. And as I get faster and faster and I'm doing just the basic weave, no additional patterns to this basket, this will become very quick. You can whip this thing out. I actually do a weave, basket weave weave, uh, really quick um, uh, line work. But it's only going to be, like, we're going to only do two more rows. That's it. it. And it's usually because it's an Easter basket. I have done hats, but I've always made sure that um, the hats that I do, uh, I have enough time. Because hats will take a lot longer. Because if you're going to make a really big weaved hat for a kid in line, and it's not a busy line, you have maybe four other people behind them or something like that, then you're going to need 12 balloons. And maybe even more, depending on how big big round you wanted so minimum 12 balloons to do a big top hat weaved okay you can do smaller ones and and I'll show you some tricks on why and how you can Ooh, I keep getting off track let's get back to baskets <laughs> okay so now that we've got the basic bottom part of this basket done we're going to start the now the wall so you need to make a bubble and the bubble is usually a finger to almost two fingers. Now make sure that you realize finger to, you know, make your measurements appropriately. You know, if it's two fingers or so, 
and then every time you make that bubble, you want to make the same size. So that makes this basket and all the bubbles look so even and so cute. Now see how it's not a huge bubble. It's not that big. That means the space between here, this bubble, and this new bubble that we're going to create is going to be much tighter into fitting. Now, if you did a larger bubble, like something this big, and you go to lay it down, you can already see, because you're gonna make another large bubble over here to, to match it up, and it will lay, and it'll have a gap in between. You'll see a gap in between there. Now, if that is the, the ideal way of how you're making that basket, then there's no problem to that. But let's practice tidy, tight weaves and, and great basket looking. And you can do distortion weave baskets later. So about a one finger, one and a half finger bubble. So it's just barely above, not that high above these guys. It's actually almost even. It goes up just a little bit. Okay, then we're gonna make another four fingers because we're just gonna match it. We're doing the basic weave, no really wacky thing to it just yet. Those will be in other tutorials. Get that, hold it with your hand, take your thumb with this and make your other bubble. You got your old balloon, you got your new balloon. Take your old balloon underneath. Take it over, and then you got your new balloon here. You're gonna do that again. Go ahead and make a bubble. And then your one finger bubble. You have your old balloon here. You have your new balloon here because you know it's attached to the bubble. New old balloon goes under, new balloon goes on top, and then rotate, grab. Now you're at the next phase. You see how that's going to be fast once you pick up the speed? Grab next. So again, four finger bubble, one finger, one and a half finger, little bubble, old balloon on the bottom, old balloon here, new balloon here, grab, grab, bubble, bubble, Old balloon, new balloon. Underneath, grab it. Again. Old balloon. New balloon, you know it's a new balloon because it's attached to the little bubble goes on top, goes underneath, grab. Now you're at where you began. What do you do? Basic new beginner weavers, you're going to come across this. You make your old balloon, make your bubble to go across, take the end as you're holding it like this, Take your fingers here, thumb and pointer finger, grab as close to the balloon, like right down here, not at the end here, because you can pull and pop. So grab down here. Go ahead and pull. As you're pulling, you're coming up to this bubble. Pull till it matches up and then it comes back up. And you've made your first wall.
technically second. That was the first, but you know, I call it the first one because this is the base. It's all about the base, about the base, about the base. All right, let me have a sip of my coffee. All right, we're gonna go through that pattern again and see how tight, see how close these bubbles are, how everything just fits and sits right on top of each other because these spacer bubbles are not that big. Spacer bubbles. That's the reason why they're called spacer bubbles. Okay, so let's get back to another small one finger, one and a half finger bubble. Fold over, make your bigger four finger bubble. So whenever you start your next row, you have to do a bubble first, then the big bubble. New rows, when you're starting your whole new row. Bubble, big. Now, we got that. We're gonna make our one finger bubble again. And old on the bottom, new on the top. Rotate, grab, bubble, bubble. See how much faster I'm doing this? I'm doing it on purpose a little bit faster. Just so you can see how you can really speed it up. Okay, I made the bubble too small, then I made it too big. Aha. Uh -huh. I had to slow down a little bit. That's what, it, when I teach, yeah, I got a patterns here. Okay, so here we go. Bubble. Make that a little smaller because we don't want a four finger bubble. And we got this bubble, new bubble. Again, we're gonna look at it this way. Old on the bottom, new on the top. So it looks like this. Old right here, new right here bring it over you have the new now new now sounds like a pokemon character so we have this and make sure you make your spacer bubbles the same as the other spacer bubbles so we have spacer bubble big bubble fold over bubble and old on the bottom, new on top. Again. We're coming to the end again. What do we do? The same thing. You can make a couple, a lot of twists on this. And if you're careful, you're fine. Slide it through here, grab it again at the tip of the bubble, not at the end of this. And pull it through. It'll, you'll feel a pop, uh, like a pull and oh, it's in. And then bring it up. Okay. This is why you work with it being soft. If this was not soft and it was all really tight and you go to do that pull through, you can pop this bubble. You end up popping this bubble because of the friction. So make sure your balloons are soft. Okay. <clears throat> we can end it here and it could be a small basket for Easter. Or we could do one more row. Let's do one more row because I like to show you guys, make sure I know you guys are known and since you can't talk back to me. So we're going to do this one a little bit faster. I want to show you now because we did these two um, teaching wise and I want to show you how fast it can actually go when, when, you're, when you know and you've got down the pattern. So...
Done. No, I didn't speed it up because you heard all the noise. <laughs> but see how fast that can go once you learn the pattern. Old, new, old, new. Okay? Finishing off a basket, what do you do? There's several ways. If you don't want any type of pinch twist up here, you go ahead and break it off, tie the knot, loop it through here, tie it, that sort of thing. I do end a pinch twist. I find it's just a way to finish it off. So we're gonna make the same size bubble as everything else. So they're all the same size. Go ahead and make that pinch twist. Twist it several times. Go ahead and break that off at the same time. I take this, wrap it under, wrap it up and over. I'll show you again. There's no tying necessary when you do it this way. Makes it faster. Minimum four twists on the pinch twist, minimum, okay? Break it off, deflate, take it underneath, bring it up, bring it in between, and pull down. You're done. When you're doing a basket in line work or on, in a group of people where it's not line line work, this move here helps with speed. That's why it's very important to do a minimum four twists on the pinch twist. Because if this was ever to just kind of pop up for some reason, pinch twist here will still hold unless some really major disaster happens but the pinch twist will still hold so under bring it back up over the pinch twist back up over the pinch twist and back down Plus, tying that many knots can sometimes just spray on your fingers because you're tying knots enough as it is. So now you've got the cute basket. It's done. As a basket, we need a handle. This is cool. So you can be creative and say, okay, I got that. So I want to do the handle in the dark violet, dark... Um, thinking purple violet you're turning violet violet okay <laughs> so you got that just to add a little accent to it when you have a plain basket you can use the same color if you want that's fine here we go tie it in And this is this blowed up all the way to like four fingers, but this is what we're going to do. Is this is how I do it really quick, but of course you can you can take your time and, and do it. So then we're gonna make the basket this way. Wrap it in. Now, very quick, you're done. But you have all this extra balloon. Give it another squeeze and stretch on this extra balloon bit. Bring it back up and go ahead and start wrapping it around.
until I quite need a little more air in that balloon. But we made it to the end. Then you see it and you're like, oh, that's okay. What you do, you make the adjustments. And then a little twirl you got kind of a viney look going over and around the basket. It's okay if you don't want to do this. It's just a suggestion. You could also save the other half to make another handle. I like doing this because it's like, in my view, in my the way I see it and how I vision it in, in a way, it's a vine going around, okay? Vines don't grow straight and everything like that. And what's really cool I will put the Easter eggs in here. I can uh, I can put an animal over here, and I could put animals over here, or I could put a flower, attach the flower here, and a flower right here, and, and wrap it around the back end here, and that the flower will sit right here. So decorate it as you see fit. That's all I'm going to say. There is your basic basket weave and I hope that you guys have some fun learning how to do the basic basket wave as I always say to all of you guys thanks for watching thanks for being part of this YouTube channel I always love to say practice practice and keep on practicing because that's what's gonna make you guys great balloon twisters